Hi guys, it's Josh Packard with uh, Jansen Teagues. And we're just kind of talking about the Lord today and, and uh, kind of thinking about the changes of, uh, that have been transpiring in Jansen and me and, and a lot of others. And so anyway, we, we, I want to let you guys hear from Jansen's mouth this morning. Well, I mean, last night I was kind of just laying awake in bed and just, and I've done this quite a few times since I met Josh and he helped set me free from bondage and what Jesus has really done for me. Just like thinking through things in my head, like, is this really the way things are? Because I struggle with, even though the word, when I read the word, it's pointing this way and it's telling me this, but it's such a minority, you know? of what you you hear on the radio or from, from church and everything. But, yeah, I mean, the Lord gave us logic, and his whole, words, his whole word has got to tie together, and there's this big picture that he wants us to see, and his word's perfect. I know that, and I've known that for a long time, but um, it has to be that Jesus has done everything. It can't be any other way and b before I was set free I was so afraid to tell tell people about Jesus or um, tell them I was a Christian I mean just I was just afraid all the time I was afraid of Jesus because I just I felt like he was upset with me and not pleased with me and I wasn't meeting standards that I had set for myself or heard other people set for me um, but then it all comes back to this basic thing that has helped me so much is telling, if you preach in the gospel to someone, you tell, there's such a big difference between Jesus has already saved you, you just have to believe it, then if you believe, then you'll be saved. That's, there's such a big difference there and it's been so f freeing. And the word points toward the first one being true where Jesus has already saved you. Just believe it. <laughs> I mean, and I, in talking to some people, I hear probably the biggest argument I hear is, well, yeah, a gift is free, but you have to receive it. And I, I mean, God is God, and he can give you a gift, <laughs> whether you receive it or not. I mean, it, he gave us this beautiful day, whether you receive it or not. Um, he gives the earth, on, he gives the rain, he puts rain on the earth, whether you receive it or not. Um, I can see why they say that. I mean, and you hear that in church and on the radio all the time. Yes, it's a free gift. Yes, it's grace, but you have to receive it. But. When the word says that Jesus is the savior of all men, that just, I mean, that's pretty clear to me. I don't know about you, Josh. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, it's like you said. <laughs> I do know about you, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, it's like you said, because I, I, I go to the same problems. There's so few, few people that believe like we do. I mean, I can count on less, on less than two hands of people that I know that believe like we do. And it's... It, and the, the more I put it to the test, the more I see that grace trumps sin every time. So no matter how far, it, like we were talking about earlier, is that it, at the end of all things, once every, every account's settled and everything's done, the last thing that, that, the last and only thing that will be manifested for the rest of eternity will be Jesus smiling, going, it was me all along. It was me. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You saw me at the beginning, and you see me again at the end. Well, everything is all to give glory and honor to Christ. By every little thing that we do, or that we think we can offer before God, or every little bit of hypocrisy or pretending, or everything we do, we count his blood as worthless. When we adhere to doctrines and uh, you know denominations and all these other things, well, we're assenting that there's different ways that are more pleasing to God than other ways. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that it has nothing nor bearing on your relationship with God in the first place. 
your salvation has always been wrapped up in Jesus and his performance. So if Jesus entered in as the high priest, using himself as a sacrifice, offering his own blood for the atonement for your sins, and then accomplishing it with his own body, then ascending, you know, then dying three days and three, you know, three days in the, in the belly of the earth, in the prison, which I heard on the radio this week, some preacher was saying, it was a comfortable place. Yeah, because that's what prisons are, comfortable. <laughs> that's where Abraham's bosom was. No, that's, you know, it's the prison. The prison is the prison. Christ went down to the prison. Then he began his church from there. He didn't just come down to paradise, and that's as far as his reach extended. He went way beyond paradise and went down to the very bottom, to the belly, to the dregs, to those that were held in the prison, which were the ones that were, the ones in, in Noah's flood that died. That was the Nephilim. Why would Jesus waste his time going down to preach to people that were already damned for eternity? Unless they weren't. So then if, if Jesus started his kingdom down there, then he rose from the dead, and he ascended to the right hand of God, and making all things subject unto him himself. Well, the scripture clearly says that all things have been made subject to Christ. We do not yet see all things made subject to Christ. Yes. You know, it says everywhere that every knee shall bow, every tribe, every nation, every tongue, everything on heaven, on the earth, under the earth, and in the sea shall all bow and confess that Jesus is the Lord. We don't see it yet, but it will happen. It has happened in the heavenlies. But if anyone confesses that Jesus is the Lord, what happens to them? Oh, if they believe in their heart and confess with their mouth, what? finish the sentence, you religious folks out there. Let's finish that sentence. <laughs> you shall be saved. And, and the thing is, is at that point, I'm pretty sure they're convinced that Jesus is the Messiah, convinced in their hearts, and they're making confession with their mouth. And there's no time stamp on that. No. <laughs> no, they use that one verse in Hebrews that says, you know, it's appointed men once to die, then a certain judgment. Mm -hmm. Well, but that's talking about Jesus taking our judgment upon himself. Mm -hmm. It's not talking about if you, before, if once you die, then you, you're going to go to judgment. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not what it means. You only have one chance. That's not what it means at all. The scripture no way backs that up. But that gives all glory and honor to Christ. Mm -hmm. That everything has been overcome by him. That he is the king of kings, the lord of lords. Anything less than that, he would not be king of kings, the lord of lords. Because there would be one king outside of his reach, being Satan. Or all these other people with their own crowns, being the kings of their own lives. So there would still be kings. There wouldn't be just one king, there would be millions of kings. And then you go back to saying that, oh, then you, what'd you say? You need to believe to be saved or the other one where it talks about how you have to receive Christ. Oh, no, the gift. So if, yes. if, you, if you offer somebody a gift, they got to take it. Well, by their own estimation of the church, they still call themselves sinners. So even though the gift has been extended to them, they still haven't received it. So again, by their own mouth, where are they going? <laughs> they don't believe in Jesus. They haven't accepted him in their hearts. They haven't received the atonement or the sacrifice. So what happens now? What happens next? Fortunately, Jesus has got them too. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Isn't that cool? I mean, and that's such good news. Everybody, that is such good news that there is nothing we can do. Yeah, I think the, the Lord wants us to go out and preach so that other people will be free and come to understand what Jesus has done for them. That's the ministry of reconciliation that in Paul talks life. about in this life, yeah. So they can be set free from their misery and their, their existence now. Mm -hmm. Not wait until after they die or waiting till the resurrection mm -hmm. or the second death. Mm -hmm. So why couldn't we get them out in this life now and have, so if God's his good father, everyone says he's a great father, right? They call him Abba Daddy. Well, do you think he'd leave us on this earth without a hope? So then if your hope is still just getting to heaven or, or whatever it is or getting your mansions in the sky, well, your hope is still for a long ways to come. You know, because you're missing the fact that just by being a Christian, you've received the gift of eternal life. So the gift is being a Christian, not getting to heaven. That's already included in the package. But by you being a believer in Jesus and being set free from your sin now, Surprise! There's your reward. And everybody's still looking off in the distance. <laughs> We're gonna, when we cross Jordan, <laughs> not realizing they already have. Satan's a crafty dude. 
So we don't even appreciate, nor are we thankful for the fact that God has done the impossible in us and resurrected our spirits and brought, him back, brought us back to himself now while we yet live. The first fruits of his creatures. Mm-hmm. That's something to be thankful for. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the, I remember my, when Jesus says, it, he, I mean, he came to give us freedom and to lift burdens off of us and to take take his yoke because it's light and easy and it's not burdensome because it's not because he's done it all and you just you can just tell people other people that I know <laughs> instead of being afraid all the time like I used to be and scared to tell people about Jesus and that, and that they have to believe because I was always afraid I wasn't believing perfectly right because you listen to a ton of preachers and if you don't if you don't believe just right, you might not be making it. Yeah. And that thought's always in was in my head. And I mean, and knowing that Jesus is the truth, there has to be absolute truth. And he he it's he's provided the way, the truth. He is the truth. Yeah. There's no need to look beyond him. Mm-hmm. I mean, don't feel bad, religious people. Because the Pharisees didn't even recognize him, when the when the temple the temple guard had to go and get him, they had to get um, Judas to to betray him because they couldn't tell which one he was, they couldn't pick him out of the crowd, you know. And not saying that we could today either, because I mean Jansen right now could be Jesus. I don't know, or you know this is what Jesus looks like. Well, of course, but <laughs> but yeah, but I mean the thing is, is how do I know? I mean, and only that's something that only the true real Messiah would say that I'm not the Messiah. If you ever seen Life of Brian, then <laughs> no, I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it's, anyway, but it's it's so funny because Jesus, everywhere he went, he looked. You couldn't pick him out of a crown. You couldn't tell. I mean, he had no authority like we would think. He didn't come with pomp and circumstance. He was a he was a carpenter. He was middle of the road and everything. He and he was probably ugly, you know, but you could definitely see a Pharisee mm-hmm. walking down through the streets with their. Because all the Jews had to have a little blue uh, border on their garment to show that they were Jews. Well, the Pharisees would enlarge that garment or that border, and they would, you know, put the law literally in a box on their head and on their hands. And they were, you know, so everywhere you walked, they were unmistakable to see. And like today, you can kind of tell the pastors when you're walking to the church. You kind of they kind of stand out a little bit sometimes. Um, but the kingdom of God is just so plain. Everybody's looking for the super hyper spiritualistic realm where, you know, lightning bolts come from your butt and stuff. It doesn't <laughs> happen that way. The, the kingdom of God is, is not observable with the eyes. Jesus said straight out. It is, it is within us where the kingdom yeah. of God is. And the only way that it will be manifested in us is by living as Christ lived in the truth. Yeah, I never caught, I never, that never stuck out to me before until you pointed that out. That is so interesting. That you don't you don't observe the kingdom of God; it's within you. That's so. Yeah, yeah really interesting. Mm-hmm. But nobody recognizes it. They want to trust their eyes. Like you know, in the First John, where I'm talking about this morning, another video, but it talks about how, you know, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, you know, all these things. Well, the lust of the eyes is where we're being caught, because we're judging each other by each other as to whether or not we're righteous. But the thing is, is that if both of you are blind, you're both falling in the ditch. Hmm. So is your salvation based upon doctrines or is it based upon whether or not Christ rose from the dead? You know, and this is the eternal question for everyone. If Christ rose from the dead, then you can, you can say, latch on to the truth that you've been saved. Mm-hmm. Grab hold of it because Christ rose from the dead. You have every right. He has given you every right to anyone that wants it can come and take it now. You don't have to go and say the sinner's prayer. You don't have to do all this. We love God because he first loved us. That's it. You don't go and say, oh, I believed in Jesus, so now I accept him in my heart. No, you didn't. Christ reveals himself to you so that you'll become obedient to him. You were saved that you would repent. You don't repent to be saved. No, no faith. Faith is a gift from God to begin with. So I can't remember where it says that. 
Oh, three. yeah. Well, that's Ephesians, right? Yeah. Ephesians 3 or something? Yes. Ephesians. Or 2. Ephesians 2. Is, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, but this is right. It's yeah. like everything is generated by him. Uh-huh. By him, for him, and through him according to his own purposes, which he designed and he foreknew and he foreordained before the foundation of the world. Christ was crucified before the foundation of the world. I mean, if you guys want to know that before anything was ever created, God did like a cheat code, like the God mode. That's just, you know. But before ever anything was created, God had already made atonement for it before it was ever even made. I mean, that's interesting. Because atonement was always there. You, we just, as Adam and Eve, and from then on, Adam and Eve, they, they knew that they were naked. So they judged themselves naked. God said, who told you you were naked? Well, they judge themselves naked, and it's been that way this whole time. And so the religious, they're still judging themselves naked, and it's evident because they keep trying to cover themselves up. They keep trying to produce these righteous works. They still keep trying to become something more than what they are. They keep trying to perfect themselves and fixing themselves according to their own estimation, not by faith in Christ and abiding in Him. Yeah, and reading the word, it's so different now because you just see everything pop out about how Jesus has done it and how it's the Holy Spirit through the word is always pointing back to Jesus. He gets the glory. He's he's done it all for you. He loves you. (laughs) It's crazy, though. So, Literally everything, everything you think you ought to do at the end of it is like Jesus. He's like, I'm here too. I'm here there too. You go down to like David when he says, you went to the belly of the earth and there you are. I go to heaven, I'm on earth. Wherever I go, there you are. Hmm. Where can I go to escape your love and mercy? You can't. You can't get away from God. He made you for a purpose. He didn't make you for destruction. He made you, and then he made you always with the will in mind to have you in redemption. Otherwise, Christ would not have been slain from the foundation of the world. I mean... This is so foreign to people and so counterintuitive because of everything we've been taught and every major religion and philosophy on this earth is always about fixing yourself, fixing yourself, changing yourself, mm-hmm. you know, as, you know, going through the steps of sanctification or whatever it is to Zen or to heaven or to, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But it's all false. Everything's according to Cain. The whole world is deceived. Everyone is. That's why when Jesus showed up, not one person recognized him as the Messiah. And even when Peter did recognize him as the Messiah, he says, you know what? God has given you that you could understand that. Mm-hmm. I mean... Yeah, the point, I mean, that it reminds me again of... In, I mean, we were all born in... As... I mean, in Adam all died, and so in Christ all shall be made alive. It's a pretty big all, huh? Well, yeah. it's all believers. Well, where does it say that? I mean, and what... Yeah. It's so easy for everyone to say, yeah, everyone was born a sinner. But then you say, well, yeah, well, Jesus reconciled everyone, all of them, back 2,000 years ago or before the foundation of the world. They don't seem like that at all. <laughs> nope. And I think, I think part of that is a, and I would have been one of those people. Oh, me too. More than six months ago. <laughs> I would have been one of those people. But I think it's a, uh, it's a self-righteousness there wanting to hold on to that I believe part. I did something different than those people that don't believe. Yep. But you didn't because God gave you that faith to begin, to begin with. Yep. <laughs> so, but, but it's good news, everyone. That's why it is the good news. Because everyone's going to be taken care of. <laughs> oh, yeah. All these mothers out there that are pining over their lost children and and stuff, and it's like, you know, I'm not going to make light of that because I know you genuinely believe it, and it scares you that your children, you think their children go to hell for eternity, mm-hmm. for a little, a lifetime, maybe, you know what, maybe 80 years of, of debauchery. So God's going to turn around for infinity, and they're going to be burned over and over again for eternity. This is not how our God works. I'm sorry. If he does burn them, it's to refine them and to set them free from the chains that hold them. It's not... I mean, the ones that are most likely and the most deserving of hell are the religious people that are leading people astray from the kingdom of heaven. They're claiming to be of Christ and be his workers and then going about leading them away 
to, so that they learn to blaspheme the name of Jesus and his blood. They blaspheme it daily and nightly because you're teaching them to as religious. And you're covering yourself and you're trying to fix yourself and you're guilting people and guilting others into church and doing all these other things. You are treading the blood of Christ underfoot and putting him to an open shame. And I'm, I'm not saying this to attack you or to condemn you. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this to set you free from it. Let it go. His salvation has no end. Mm -hmm. No end at all. There is no end in sight. As far as sin has spread, Christ will superabound that. And it, it might be after the lake of fire because you always read Revelation again. It talks about a first resurrection. It talks about a second death. Well, where's the second resurrection? Because there is a second resurrection. You know, and, I, and the second resurrection, I believe, is actually the bride. When you see the bride and where she descends from God out of heaven as a bride adorned you know, the holy city of New Jerusalem, well, look at what she's made of, and you'll notice that everything that she's made of is able to withstand fire and to be purified by fire. Mm -hmm. So, and where you see the lake of fire and wherever you see all mentions of fire and where, where all the fire comes from is from heaven. Hmm, strange. And it, why is that strange? Because all the Old Testament altars were all lit from fire that came down from heaven. Fire is where God is. God dwells in the fire. Look at Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. Look at the burning bush, Moses' burning bush. Look at this stuff. Christ baptizes with the Spirit and with fire. Fire, fire, fire. Jesus is called the refiner's fire in yeah. Micah. Yeah, exactly. And when, God, when Jesus sent the Holy Spirit on the apostles, it showed up with, as tongues of fire yep. on their shoulders. Yep. And there's just a lot of... I don't think there's coincidence there. No. <laughs> yeah, the Bible doesn't you lose use any wasted words. Mm -hmm. And it's also that we can have this picture and this great hope in our Messiah who loved us and washed us in his own blood. And he and I are both Gentiles. We should not have any portion in this at all. Mm -hmm. At all. We should be burning and rotting. We should be, I mean, we have the full, the full punishment should be coming upon us. But we've received the full pardon by Jesus. For no good reason. We weren't enjoined by the law. We, there was no promise made to our ancestors. Nothing. But by faith, we are saved. Now, the eternal salvation has already been taken care of by Christ since he led captivity captive and led a train of vanquished foe. Well, to lead captivity captive means he overcame death. He overcame hell. If he did, who's the new king? Hmm. Anyway, I mean, I can't see any other way around that. No. I mean, you'll have a hard time arguing that against me on this or against us on this, against all of us that believe this way. Because, it, you want to go ahead? Yeah, it's just, it's better news than, the good news, the good news of the gospel is better than I ever thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Praise the Lord for that, because he, he did it all. Yeah, and so... We can all we can all either put our our strength and, and our faith in the strength and power of hell, or we can put our faith in the strength and power of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's a question you guys need to settle for yourselves today. Anything further? No, I think that's good. <laughs> all right, you guys. We both want to. You know, I, I definitely want to say, man. I really hope you guys see and hear this and receive it. You know, and be set free. Don't don't let men dictate to you the words of God where God is willing to speak to you himself and he has it there's a, the word of God you can read it yourself there's a contract right here written in blood you guys are you're more than welcome to go check it out I mean look at first John look at Hebrews look at Romans look at these and read them read them by themselves isolate them down by themselves and just read what the author is trying to say in that particular instance Read it for what he's trying to get across at that time. Don't jump from scripture to scripture. Stay inside of the same book and finish it. See if what we're saying isn't there. Mm -hmm. And and I mean, in the context that we're speaking of, not, not the line upon line stuff that you're hearing in church. So, anyhow. All right, you guys. God bless you, and uh, happy hunting. All right, mm -hmm. bye. It'll turn off eventually. <laughs>